This is exciting. This is, uh, you know, the coming to an event like this and, and just being able to talk to other people who are involved in search is pretty cool. The, what was interesting was just the, sort of the starting of the event, immediately kind of a hardcore debate between the Microsoft and the Google guy and, and about whether we actually are seeing good results out there. The Google guy kind of being, yeah, this is, we're in, at a good spot and you could sense that the Microsoft guy, we've got a, bit, a lot of things to change. So I think we're at this sort of point where we've gotten to a nice level in search. If, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, this works. But we're going to see a lot of change, I think, where people are going to say, look, what can we do next? And what we're doing at Recorded Future is kind of a small piece of that. We're trying to think about temporal search, trying to think about how we can actually go from search to analysis, try to ask, ask completely different sort of questions. I'm interested in what Apple is going to do next. Tell me what Apple is going to do next. Tell me about what is going to happen in Egypt next week. What do we know about what's going to happen in Egypt next week? And I think we're see, going to see a lot of these sort of things where people want to find different sort of slices of the web, not just find me all the documents. That's what the last 10 years has been. How can I build the biggest, fastest, sort of just brutal keyword-based index that's going to find me the documents that I'm looking for? But, you know, look, we can do better than that. And, you know, I think we've seen this certainly in application-specific sort of things when you're looking for a flight. Nobody's going to get you, a, a, when you're searching for a flight from flying to A to B, nobody's going to pull up a, a, a newspaper article about Boeing. They know to get you where you're going to travel from. And they know that this is something that's going to happen in the future. They know what time period you're interested in, presenting flights and so on. Why couldn't we do that in a million different domains? where I actually know what the user is trying to do and able to do application-specific sort of things. So, I, and we're gonna see this in a whole lot of ways. We're gonna see that people are gonna go from just thinking about keywords, again, kind of thinking just, you know, with a keyword being Barack Obama or the White House or, you know, General Motors, and think about events. So people are interested in IPOs or bomb explosions or product releases. Allow me to think in those sort of terms and allow me to filter by what's actually happening out there in the world. So put more context to it. And then you put that together with mobile where I actually know where people are. Now we're going to start seeing really interesting things. So the sort of debate that we've seen in there today with just being able to think long term, short term has been great. So far, again, because we, we heard this discussion this morning, starting with Peter Thiel's sort of point about that there is this, this, this big sort of capital cost to get started in search. And, and he even said that, you know, we talked about tens or twenties of billions of dollars. You know, that's enough to scare a poor entrepreneur to just go home and kind of hide out. Now, we heard the counter argument that that's not true at all. The guy from Blecko was like, look, you know, you can do this with a 25 person team and a $25 million. So, okay, still a lot of money, but you know, much, much more modest, obviously. Now, what's really exciting, obviously, is that if we, it, with, we can start seeing providers providing the sort of data that allows other people to do this. So at Recruited Future, we not only build the search engine, if you want, or the query sort of interface that allows people to interact with our information, we also provide a data feed that allows application providers or application builders do these sort of, sort of things, where they can get into the stream of our data and now start using that. And I, I think we're gonna see a bazillion of these sort of things, for whether it's a sentiment engine or a event engine or a temporal engine or a prediction engine, all of these sort of things, being able to you know, pull from those and use those to build the applications of the future on the web. So hey, if you're gonna be a developer, there's, there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff to be done. Now, the hard thing is going to be able to string all that together and build meaningful user experiences where it's not going to kind of be sort of little hiccups here and there because it doesn't tie together if, if you're just pull, pulling, all these, pulling all these things together. But. So starting with the entrepreneurs, we might be in for sort of a nasty sort of situation here where obviously the last year or two years have been just super exciting. Money has been basically free, available, you know, just go take it. Have a reasonable idea and a reasonable set of people and you can get infinite supply of money. There's like just, it's kind of, kind of embarrassing to say in this sort of coming out of an economic crisis, but there's just enough money to, to you know, just go take it. That might very well blow up on us. And, and I don't know if it's a surprise to anyone and you could argue the, you know, whether this is going to happen now or two years out, but there's clearly a bubble explosion to be, ha to be had here. And which is not necessarily going to be very pretty. Uh, I think that's what entrepreneurs had to think about. So how do you construct your business so that explosion is not just going to make you go up, blow up? You've got to be able to find out a, how, how you can kind of survive that sort of winter you know, situation here, here because it, it's coming. 
Um, when it comes to developers, I don't know if there's any revolution around the corner for, for developers. The, the, I don't think so. Uh, I am a developer myself at some level. I don't see the revolution in one year out. Maybe there are more and more sort of things that I can string together, take advantage of other people's data, and do these sort of things. There are some exciting things that we can use at Recorded Future we've seen from other people. But nothing that of revolution. Um, probably sound a little boring when I say that, but, but that's, what, that's what we think. Um, in terms of, um, what was the last piece? End users. So in terms of end user experiences, I think we're going to see a lot of cool things starting. I think mobile is coming in. Somebody just, you know, you start seeing these layers being overlaid on a mobile phone. I hold up, you know, the sort of Google goggles sort of thing, which is who knows if that's the thing. But these sort of things where search just really kind of gets into my car, gets into my phone, gets into everything that I do. That's going to be very exciting. And that we might going to see now if that's something that makes it develop, you know, exciting for the developers or for the end users you know, to be seen. Maybe this will also take longer. Everything, damn it, takes, takes longer than, than you think. But that is around the corner, I think. These semantic technologies where I can actually understand more than just simple keywords, uh, you know, we're at UCF, UCSF, so San Francisco, University of California, understanding more than that, that I actually am talking about, you know, the whole verb sort of conversation that we had here, talking about things that are actually happening, be, things that are important to me as a person, me traveling, me going to the movies, under, you know, more, more events or more, you know, the large scale events being at an IPO or a bomb explosion or whatever I have, when I can understand semantics, time being an important one, you know, for, for us, that, that ends up being pretty exciting. That, I think, we'll, we're going to start seeing now. 